Hello everyone, I am Tacit and today I'm going to be going over the new mythic of Mamba Sarah. So we're going to be going and opening a bunch of keys for this thing, going over some teams. And one other thing to kind of mention too is of course we got uh, Bounty Hunter uh, going on today. Before we do get into the mythic, do just want to uh, go over that real quick since we don't normally cover a separate video for it since we just do it on uh, stream. But uh, Warwolf, Tograki Warrior, Rift Links, and Book of Secrets is pretty much what we'll be running. I'll just run the uh, Werewolf for the Reds, get into Jagraki, Jagraki solos pretty much the entire thing, use Rift Links to get the uh, Val Raven out of place so it's blocked by yellows, and this thing is just here to do nothing. It does have a Daemon Summon, which is kind of cool, however, it's generally not going to be worth uh, casting due to how random it is, so you'll just use true damage and kill it out that way. However, of course, the other more interesting thing is, well, we got the Mythic. Uh, as usual, it is in the Glory Gem Guild and uh, VIP Chest Drop Table, uh, and it will be for the uh, next week as the only Mythic in those Drop Tables is the only two that it is not in is gold keys and event keys event keys will still have the normal event week trips and gold keys of course do not drop uh mythics but uh anyways as far as what it does it is kind of like tina 9000 except a bit different uh, as far as uh, what it does so if i go to unowned over here so basically it hits a bunch of random enemies it gets to specifically end up hitting six but it does it with physical damage it does it with a uh half of its magic up to 1.25 of its magic time or plus two which is a really weird number but uh, basically, it actually gains anywhere from 3 to 77 additional damage or so uh, per magic that it gains. And, of course, this does get boosted by uh, Fairy Fire uh, by 50% if they happen to be Fairy Fire. And, of course, you can use magic metals with it. Uh, overall, pretty high amount of damage. However, the biggest issue with this is that it will end up ending its turn after a cast and has absolutely no follow-up whatsoever. Uh, no amount of mana accumulation, no amount of extra turn chance, no amount of any extra effects other than the damage so as soon as it does that it's kind of just ending its turn and just doing one big damage burst uh, this will be pretty good for concentrating damage when there's a few enemies left it could also potentially if you get really lucky just end up heading up out a single enemy and if enough of it focuses onto a single one you'd end up getting enough to kill them out uh, similar to Tina 9000 it does have some spell reduction however not as much only 25% instead of 50% and it does give all green allies one to all stats uh, per turn which of course includes itself this is increasingly becoming less effective due to the fact that that uh, uh, stats have been getting increasingly higher, and as time goes on, this becomes increasingly worse. However, as a stand, it's not too bad, especially with the kind of effect that she has. But uh, overall, I would say she's a bit of a weaker version of Tina 9000. Tina 9000, I definitely feel like, has more applicable uses, given that it's the best spell tank in the game, in the current state of the game, as well as being true damage rather than physical damage. Uh, the fact that this is physical damage might be a little bit better for Guild Wars, though, of course, given that she shares the exact same coloration of Wild Queen. In many instances, I feel like Wild Queen is just going to be the way to go compared to this thing because Wild Queen gets to do everything has extra turn has the damage has uh, the mana accumulation has pretty much everything it needs even has that attack reduction to make sure they don't get counter whereas this thing it's, it's just doing the damage it just has one of many of those aspects so overall I feel like it's not going to have much of a purpose because it's mainly for Guild Wars and Wild Queen does that better sharing the exact same color and having lower mana cost than it so Overall, probably not going to be used for much. However, let's go get it and show a couple teams and see how it uh, functions. So we'll do this 50 at a time so we don't end up wasting as many. And, uh, of course, we already got it. Nice. <laughs> well, that was a very long key opening. Look at how long that took. Well, there we go. That's uh, that's the kind of luck you generally want to see. I was, I was saying earlier, I didn't say it on here, though. Uh, that I was wanting to uh, get it within... Um, so we still have over a 1,000 keys. Well, objective complete. <laughs> But anyways, let's go get this thing upgraded. Uh, where? There it is. Okay. Uh, of course, it is a mythic, so of course we can uh, not do that. Uh, we can go use uh, orbs on it. So we will go use an orange orb. We will go use a green orb. Actually, speaking of orbs, they're actually trying to sell a bunch of orbs right now. I don't really think the offer is that worth it right now. Uh, well, they have that offer too. Uh, also not well, offer. I feel like is that worth it? But they got this flash off going on this weekend. Personally, don't feel like it's worth it. Try and sell two of them too. Almost makes it seem like you get the mythic, but just the metal of Anu with the three orbs in the uh, gems there. And of course, metal of Anu does not stack. Of course, uh, once you have one, you uh, don't get any additional effect. It's just a 20%. Whatever your highest percent is, is what ends up happening. Not really that worth it, but it's there. Anyways, uh, what we're doing, we need to go and uh, put this into team so we can go and use this. So over to PvP. And let's see what this thing looks like when all maxed out. So uh, we have three teams that are going to go and uh, mess around with this in if i can end up remembering its name uh that will work okay uh let's see let's go replace all the wild queens which were just used as placeholders and uh see how these do 
and get some first impressions of this thing and see if we can actually do anything. So uh, overall, it's going to have a very similar play style for the most part of Tina 9000. Uh, it's not exactly a Tina 9000, but kind of close. Oh, I'm not sure if I want to take a zoo off that early. Um, gosh, web spinner. <laughs> Why must every PvP team be so annoying? Uh, well, in all fairness, this is a web spinner versus a web spinner team. So uh, we should be okay, though. He does have a double convert, and he's about to convert out green, which is obviously the main color we need. However, we do have a backup plan with this. Uh, you may notice this is, of course, pure green team. Um which does gain plus one all stats per turn. Uh, however, we are using a plus two yellow banner with this, and the main reason for that is on uh, green day, uh, you are very likely to see something that converts green to something else, which is exactly what we have in this battle. And that's basically just a way to kind of counter that out a little bit here. So right here, unfortunately, we don't have too good of a move. Um, we are in Tangled 2, which is kind of problematic. I think we're just going to go for the Leprechaun and hope we get lucky. And uh, that gets us kind of into place, but not really. Because he's about to kill our Web Spinner. And we're not really going to have much of an answer back. Uh, because we are entangled and everything. Uh, we might just have to let him get the poke and go for green here. And uh, it's going to be a little bit short on mana. Very unfortunate being one whole mana short right there. But um, we can then go get his cast off. Go get that and uh, just get a little bit of a burst. But uh, overall this mythic does seem like it's going to be underwhelming in many situations. As you can see right now we're about to hit a 27 to uh, 53. Which actually reminds me I didn't set extra magic. But I think in this particular instance it's not going to make too huge of a difference. Given that we're pretty much already dead to the web spinner so we might as well retreat at this point let me go get that magic on because of course uh, she does gain quite a bit of a benefit from the additional magic and we're actually just going to go all in on the magic uh we could go 20 percent as well depends on what kind of team we're going like 20 percent to the eight magic i think we'll actually run with that because um most of the man most of the time you won't be able to really get more on her so we'll go into uh pvp see what we have for the next one uh that's not a real enough fight Come on, everything's either too easy or going to obliterate us with meta. Okay, we'll try it this way. So, let's try this again and uh, see how it goes. So, uh, as you can see, damage a little bit better, 31 to 63. And, of course, it does get to do that six times. So, we have a Lumen play, too, so that's nice. Uh, so, a little bit of a better start here. Uh, we did not get full mana on our Tulio, uh, which would be ideal. I kind of want to cast a Web Spinner here. Uh, he's about to get a brown to red convert, which is not going to do anything, so let's take this for now. Get our Tulio rolling. He has a chance of taking Skull, however, I believe we just go for it because we have the Web Spinner there. Uh, could take that red extra turn there too, however, we don't actually use red on this team. So don't necessarily need to, so go grab the Skull there. Of course, we are doing triple off the uh, Web Spinner there, uh, which kind of makes me want to go for another Skull there. Just kind of get it poked. Uh, that will be the last little bit of our mana, so we can go and poke a billion times here. I'm actually not going to take that skull, so that we can go poke six times. And we do end up cleaning up that one kill there. And uh, that thing's almost going to decide to escape. It might actually get away from us. That would be quite unfortunate. Uh, I don't think we have a follow-up that can kill it immediately, because we'll do that, and it'll escape. Okay, good. It'll play nice and not escape then. So we can go get our little bit of green then, and get our mana going. Get another leprechaun. Gosh, that thing might escape again. No. No escaping. And then we'll go kill that out. But overall, rather average. See what the next one does. Uh, the next two actually do use Queen Atania. So uh, Queen Atania does do, of course, a 50% additional uh, damage uh, to uh, spell-based uh, damage. So we will be able to utilize that so that she can actually hit a little bit higher, which will hopefully be a little bit more into kill range uh, compared to normal. We will need to get some extra turns. However, that is why we have a Vespera uh, for our team. Unfortunately, we did get Frozen. He is using, I believe, no, he's just using a Hero Class that happens to have Freeze at start. He's using uh, Sun Sparrow. So we are going to have to wait that out. Uh, the other team that I have does use Cleanse and is a bit cheaper. However, uh, this one does not actually carry Cleanse, which uh, does mean we have to wait it out or use Cedric Metals if we really needed the anti-cleansing. Uh, However, we did get the Cleanse there. So we should be able to explode and hopefully get full mana onto Tulio and uh, kind of go from there. Also, we do have enough reds to go for that, so we will. Unfortunately, Submerge does dodge some of it, but um, we will be able to get our mana up here and uh, start getting this rolling a little bit. We'll take the skull there first, though. Take the other skull. Uh, unfortunately, ever so slightly short on damage. We could go for an explosion here to get the kill. However, I kind of want to pressure his uh, zoo goth at this point, so we'll go try getting purple here. Uh, unfortunately, I believe we did miss our extra turn. And Zugoth does get his kill. However, we do have our cast. And uh, one interesting thing of why we're kind of using Vespera, well, aside from just being a pure purple team, uh, we can end up getting a magic buff from this. And in doing so, um, as you can see, uh, her damage is pretty high now. And we don't need to worry about Submerge because she hits six random enemies. So, um, yeah, it kind of just bypasses straight past the Submerge there. But, uh, yeah, overall, 
not the greatest of troops, <laughs> which is something we already knew. It's um, it's likely below the lower half, I would say. Um, Tina 9000, I feel like, is the way superior version if you want something similar to her. Uh, basically, she's just so outdone by Wild Queen and Queen um, in the Tina 9000 that I really don't feel like it'll come out. Um, she gets to do a lot of hits, but um, it's just not better than most of what already exists within the game. So it's just not really going to have much of a purpose, it doesn't seem. Many of these battles are flopping pretty hard, <laughs> to say the least. Though we are up against some rather meta teams in some of these battles, but still, it's not really carrying its weight that much. It could potentially have a little bit of effectiveness in Explore. However, compared to how high of a range Rowan normally gets to do, I'm not sure if it would really be used in comparison to like Rowan or Queen Titania or anything like that. Especially with the randomness of it. And did I say Queen Titania? I meant um, Rowan or um, uh, Phoenicia uh, with her big AoE hit. But anyways, here's a little bit of a cheaper and safer way to use her. Uh, probably one of the cheapest teams that you could end up building. Uh, you could end up replacing with Queen Natania for something a little bit cheaper. But of course, this is kind of centered around the fairy fire uh, aspect. And uh, we should be able to land a lot more extra turns. This also has a cleanse built into the team. So you don't need to worry about things like uh, freeze. Kind of like how we had to somewhat worry about the, the previous battle for at least a few turns there. So if we do end up getting frozen or anything here, we can end up just getting straight out of it and kind of go from there. Unfortunately, Yagwe is about to pressure so much damage. And uh, figures we use brown when he has a anti-brown team here. However, it shouldn't end up mattering too much. Uh, we can convert away all that. Uh, start getting our mana up. Uh, take pretty much every last extra turn that's on the board. Just kind of cycle through everything. Uh, Yagwe is going to get a very dangerous hit, which almost makes me want to Mountain Crusher here. Uh, as that seems like the safest way to potentially stop him. So we will go for that. Luckily, we do hit an extra turn. Not enough red statue do anything out of the... Uh, out of the extra turn there so we will just go for a bunch of pokes 31 to 63 right now fairy fire does increase that by 50 percent which it made it enough damage to kill out the hero and uh queen of tanya is exactly enough red so we can go for that so so far oddly enough the cheapest team worked out the best <laughs> go figure that that happens sometimes where the cheapest team does uh, function the uh best out of all of them but uh yeah let's try it again it actually wasn't that bad here let's actually try against the zugov team this one's super meta so we'll go against this uh, that's actually one of the better defend teams in the game right now, uh, with all the uh, Zugoff focus. Uh, let's see. So we'll go for uh, that one. Take our brown over. Uh, oh, yeah, we're frozen on brown. Hello. Uh, let's see. We'll take blue. Let's go get unfrozen on brown so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, that'll also give us full mana. Uh, make sure not to deny out right if we can. Uh, we will go for this cast here. It unfortunately, well, actually, it could still get a kill. Uh, it is very unlikely not to get a kill, but it still can. Uh, Queen of Tanya, we cannot get a free hit out of, so I think we're just going to go for the cast already. Uh, we do have a lot of fair fires, however, it does not focus in any way that actually secures a kill. However, we already have the Apothecary, so we get it right back up. Again, not enough reds to do a Queen of Tanya for free. However, that shouldn't really matter too much, uh, because we should be able to get our follow-up here. Uh, even if we want to, we could go for a Queen of Tanya into it. It might be a little bit safer doing it that way. However, let's see. Does it actually clean up everything? It might because of the fairy fire there. Nope, ever so slightly short. So it might have been slightly better to do the Queen of Tanya. However, we already have Apothecary, so we could literally just feed right back into it again. Cast it again, and it is dead. And there we go. But anyways, uh, thoughts on the Mythic? Don't get it. <laughs> Don't get it. I mentioned this earlier, and it's still the case now. It, it just, uh, just does not seem that viable. Um... In many instances, it just seems like a worse version of um, Tina 9000. Um, it doesn't have the higher spell reduction. It doesn't have the armor gain. Um, it does physical damage instead of true damage. Though it does get to do more damage, but it does it as physical rather than true damage. And I don't know, it, it does technically get more hits, but its range is so random. It does gain a nice little benefit from magic, but there's so few ways to effectively quickly feed it magic. And in uh, many of those instances, other things would gain more of a benefit from it. Wild Queen shares its colors, and even though it might be kind of a Guild War kind of option, it's uh, outdone by Wild Queen, which is also available this week, by the way. Uh, still for a couple more days in Soul Forge. So overall, yeah, I would completely skip on this Mythic. It is another uh, thing for Mr. Scales, though. So if you're missing Ms. Uh, the Mr. Scales Mythic, if you don't have an Oriali, uh, oh, so we got a Karakroft Star from the Bounty Hunter. So 17 there. Uh, the Mythic brought us to... Oh, yeah, that reminded me, too. Uh, something else that happened. <laughs> this is almost more relevant than... Uh, actually, you know what? Maybe there is a reason to get this Mythic. I lied. There is actually one reason to get this Mythic if there is no other reason. And that is... I almost forgot. Uh, Missa Scales is the first ever 20-star kingdom in Gems of War. 
Um, so uh, 20 Star Kingdoms, as many of you probably already know, as it's been uh, kind of there in the power level thing for uh, like two years now, and we just haven't been able to access it until uh, literally right now. Uh, but the final power level, or at least what was the final power level, they raised it to 30 in the, the most recent patch. But uh, the previously <laughs> final power level uh, was a one additional stat at level 20. And uh, we have finally hit the very first one. So Mr. Scales now gives one whole additional stat if you get this mythic. Uh, there is no other way to get that stat, that one whole extra armor, unless you uh, do that. Actually, that's not where you would see the thing. But uh, right over here, we could see the um, uh, plus three to kingdom skill bonus, which is armor. So uh, that's two extra damage for our Rowan then. <laughs> Obviously, it's not much, but hey, they add up. But um, yeah, that's the that's the reason why you would get the mythic. <laughs> There's almost no other reason that, or if you're uh, uh, generally speaking, if you have more than half the mythics in the game, it is kind of worth going for mythics, just because uh, you have a. It's better to get a bad mythic that um, is new than a any mythic that is not new, <laughs> like getting a repeat of one. So um, in that regard, if you have more than half the mythics in the game, you might still want to go for it. But if nothing else, 20 star Mr. Scales, if you have literally everything else upgraded, uh, plus one whole permanent armor bonus is pretty much the whole purpose of this mythic. Even if you're not using it, it at least gives you a permanent one armor if and only if you can get it to 20 star. Uh, otherwise, if you're still working on 10 star, um, it can count as the one mythic you need for 10 star. So if you don't have a Yali yet, you can use it for that purpose too. And it would still give you a additional armor just off a of 10 star instead of 20. So do be mindful of that. Uh, otherwise, skip on it unless you need it for kingdom upgrades that's pretty much the bottom line that's my uh spin on the uh mythic here if you guys any other questions feel free to leave it in the comment section below all the teams will be below if you want to uh, use any of them i feel like the last team was probably the most effective and also the cheapest so go figure ends up working out Anyways, guys, we'll be streaming Bounty Hunter today at uh, noon Eastern Standard Time and uh, going over uh, everything with that, going through there. We might mess around with the Mythic a little bit more, see if there's any kind of weird viable team that might be able to be used for it. But for all I can tell, that is probably not going to be the case. Anyways, guys, have a wonderful weekend. Best of luck on the Bounty Hunter event and even better luck, hopefully, <laughs> as good as luck, luck we got on the uh, chest drop table. Keep in mind that it does take around a thousand gem keys or seal keys if you are going to try for it. Uh, generally, you will not get it within 50. That is absurdly lucky. It is not normally what happens. Uh, do be mindful of that if you're going to be opening keys. Anyways, guys, we'll catch you later, and thank you all so much for watching. Goodbye, everyone.